Let's take a look at the liver, an accessory organ, and also the pancreas and gallbladder with that. By accessory organ, I mean organs that will influence the digestive system without being a part of the actual tube. So no foods pass through these organs. They'll just pass through the tube of the stomach and the small intestine, large intestine. The liver itself secretes bile, which emulsifies or breaks down fats into smaller globules so they'll be digested easier. It also stores, is responsible for storing some glucose in the form of glycogen. Um, it will do other, uh, many other functions in there, detoxifies blood and things like that. In fact, I heard one account saying that there are over 400 functions, known functions of the liver itself. So very influential organ. Also within the liver, we'll find the gallbladder, which will store concentrated bile. It'll concentrate it up to 20 times the original strength, which makes sense. You don't want to have bile uh, going into the digestive system if you have no lipids to digest or emulsify. So it just stores it for a while until it's needed. What anchors the liver is our two little uh, ligaments. One is the falciform ligament and one is the round ligament. It almost looks like a frenulum anchoring it to the diaphragm itself. The round ligament actually is a remnant and that's how I remember it and explain it is it's a remnant of the umbilical cord. Round is the remnant. The falciform ligament actually holds, it's not a true ligament, but it holds the diaphragm um, and liver kind of in the same area. Helps to anchor it down. If we were to zoom in a little bit we'll see the liver itself is broken up into many lobes. A little bit different in the cat than in the human. Human has many lobes too, but not as many as the cat. We always start by labeling the left side. This is the cat's left. So we'll always be identifying all of our directions according to the patient. The, the cat itself, this is their left, so this is the left lateral lobe, the left medial lobe, the quadrate, like quadratic formula, we'll see the little gallbladder right here in between the quadrate and the next lobe. So left lateral, left medial, quadrate, right medial, we're still on the medial side, medial meaning middle. Now if I lift up the intestine a little bit, we're going to see the other two. Here's the left, or sorry, the right lateral and the caudate lobes. The caudate like caudal meaning tail, these are the most tailmost uh, lobes of the liver itself. Now we take a look we see the stomach. If I lift up the lobes of the liver, specifically the left lateral lobe, we'll see the stomach. And I've got a nice diagram to help out with that. But this is a nicely shaped stomach. You don't always find it like this. A nice C shape. Maybe a little bit bigger down at the bottom than what we're used to. But you'll see it take on a lot of shapes. If I were to lift up the stomach itself and move some of the intestine out of the way, what we'll see is there's an organ that's built right in following underneath and it's a big C-shaped organ as well. This is the pancreas. Now that'll send its digestive juices. What it'll do, we hear the pancreas and insulin regulating sugar. Um, we're gonna be, it's going to be communicating a lot with the liver to either store or release sugar into the blood, uh, bloodstream. So you hear the term insulin. We also have some other things that the pancreas does, like neutralize the acids coming out of the stomach. Um, we'll be taking a look at those enzymes a little bit more in depth after the dissection is done. So we'll be uh, investigating that a little bit later. Right now we just want to get a couple basic uh, functions in there. It'll digest lipids, it'll do a whole bunch of different things. But for this dissection we're just going to need to know a couple. It's a C-shaped one. Um, basically you'll see it'll follow the duodenum, a uh, section of the small intestine that we'll take a look at later. This is going to follow there. This is the tail of the, uh, of the pancreas. This is the body, and this is the head. I always think of head down. The head is facing downward underneath the stomach itself. Now, if we were to take a look at a diagram of how these organs put their substances into the digestive system, this is a rough sketch, but it, it serves to actually show what we're seeing. We've got the liver up here. We've got a, the liver itself is going to send its bile down to the digestive system. This is called the hepatic duct. We call it hepatic and you hear of hepatitis, inflammations of the liver itself. Hepatic means liver, so it's a liver duct that ties into there. The liver itself is actually made up of cells called hepatocytes and they'll have little canals or what we call canaliculi that will move the bile to um, other parts of the cells and send it ultimately down this duct. It is an exocrine gland as well. The gallbladder 
because it's got the stored version of this bile and it's more concentrated, it'll send its digestive juices down through what's called the cystic duct. Now these two ducts together, the hepatic duct and the cystic duct, will join together to form the common bile duct. Now the pancreas, we said the pancreas it was sitting uh, right along the duodenum and I lifted up the stomach a little bit so we could see that. The pancreas itself will send digestive juices into the small intestine as well. So the pancreas has a little duct right here and that's called the pancreatic duct. Pretty easy to remember. It runs underneath the duodenum and it joins up with the common bile duct. Now you'll notice if you look closely, you'll see a small section right here where all three of those come together, cystic duct, hepatic duct, and the pancreatic duct. Common means that two are together, so we can't use that term of pancreatic duct because it's actually three combined. So what we do is we combine that together and call it the hepato, meaning liver, pancreatic, obviously meaning pancreas, ampulla, which is more of a merging of several ducts together. The hepatopancreatic ampulla is what actually ties into the duodenum itself.